Good morning, Springs Church. Welcome. Let's begin by reading from Psalm 80 together. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. But let your hand be upon the one at your right hand, the one whom you made strong for yourself. Then we will never turn back from you. Give us life and we will call on your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved.
have a seat, church. Good morning, church. Welcome. You are our our welcome guests here this morning. If you're visiting with us, we are so thankful that you're here on the Sunday before Christmas. We pray that your time of worship with us will be blessed, and uh, we're so grateful and thankful that you're here. There are just two announcements uh, this morning. One announcement is uh, a reminder that uh, there is no class on next Sunday. Next Sunday will just be worship like this Sunday. We only had a couple of people who got here extra early for fellowship, and you are welcome to come next week extra early for fellowship as well, but but there won't be classes uh, next Sunday, uh, just our time of worship together. The classes will resume the Sunday after. The second announcement to share with you is that at the communion tables, we have uh, some some Christ candles for you to take home and light on Christmas Day. You uh, know that we are uh, in our season of, of Advent, and each week we have been uh, lighting one of the Advent candles, which we'll do again here in a few minutes. And uh, the candles at the table are for you to take home and light on Christmas Day. What we would like for you to do is, as a family, light the Christmas candle, maybe even take a picture and post to the church Facebook page so that we can all uh, see you doing that. And we've been lighting those candles because we are in hopeful expectation of the Christ child. We're in a Christmas season, and we know that for many of us, that can be a mixed bag. I don't know what 2019 has been like for you. Uh, Some people are here feeling like this has been their very best year, but we also have people here who are feeling like this has been their very worst year. But however you have come this morning, we're glad that you are here and have come to be with us because one of the things that we do all share in common is that hopeful expectation of the Christ child coming. It is our longing and our desire for love, which is appropriate today because in this Advent season, we are celebrating the gospel of peace and we are hungering and thirsting for the peace that only Jesus, the Prince of Peace, can bring in our life. And so today, on the fourth and final Sunday of Advent, today we are going to light the candle of love. McGinn family is going to do that for us today. We are going to light the candle of love, which symbolizes God's love for the world. Emmanuel, God with us. So great is his love that he sent his one and only son for our everlasting life. And so as we light the candle, I read for you in Matthew chapter 1. Now the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph... Son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. 
When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son. And he named him Jesus. Let's pray together. God, we hunger and desire for your love in our lives, and we wait expectantly for Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. And we pray in his holy name. Amen. Stand and praise Jesus Christ together.
the light of the world. You are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. You are the light of the world, Jesus. You are the light of the world. You are the light of the world. You are the light of the world, Jesus. You are the king of the earth. You are the king of the earth. You are the king of the earth, Jesus. servants with news of the world's redemption and the coming of the Savior. Make our hearts leap with joy and fill our mouths with songs of praise, that we may announce glad tidings of peace and welcome the Christ in our midst. Amen. You were the word at the beginning, one with Nothing compared. 
come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom divine. Until the Son of God appear, rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Welcome. In the name of Jesus Christ, may his peace be with you. Our text today, in this fourth Sunday of Advent before Christmas, comes from Isaiah chapter 7, beginning at verse 10. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz, ask the Lord your God for a sign whether in the deepest depths or in the highest heights. But Ahaz said, I will not ask. I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear now, you house of David. Is it not enough to try the patience of humans? Will you try the patience of God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. He will be eating curds and honey when he knows enough to reject the right and he knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right. For before the boy knows enough to reject the wrong and choose the right, the land of the two kings you dread will be laid to waste. The Lord will bring on you and your people. And on the house of your father, a time unlike any other, since Ephraim broke away from Judah, he will bring the king of Assyria. The word of the Lord. Let's pray. Father, for your word, for your ancient word, we give you thanks. So on this Sunday before Christmas, as we await the birth of your son into this world and we celebrate it into this world in our hearts and our lives, we pray for ears to hear that we may not miss his cry. And we pray for hearts to follow that we may not miss his peace. And God, I pray for the gift of preaching. And we ask this in the name of your son, Emmanuel. In the book of Isaiah, the opposite of fear is not courage. In the book of Isaiah, the opposite of fear is peace. Let me say that again. In the book of Isaiah, the opposite of fear is not courage. The opposite of fear is peace. And for Isaiah, peace can only be received in faith. In Isaiah, here's what faith looks like. Faith is not a a matter of just knowing the right information. It's not just knowing the right content. It's not a matter of just knowing all the right answers. It's not even a matter of just this firm belief and an unchanging mind. It is rather... A practical reliance upon the assurances of God. When there is real risk to your life and your future. And where your own resources and abilities are just not enough. Faith means to entrust your security and your future to the God who is with us. So today, this Sunday before Advent, we have two stories. 
One, of fear. The other, of faith. One where there is no peace, and one where peace abounds, even in the midst of insecurity and loss. So our first story is probably one you don't know very well. It's the story of Ahaz, which we just read about him in the book of Isaiah. Ahaz is a king of Israel in the 8th century B.C. Now, he comes into power when his grandfather dies uh, and his father passes on the kingdom to him. But when he comes into power, actually Israel is split into two kingdoms. There's the kingdom of the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah. He actually is ruling over Judah. And in this time, there is a lot of political unrest. There's a lot of conflict. Particularly in mind with the Assyrians, who are a superpower at this time. And the Assyrians are pressing in on all sides. But his primary conflict doesn't come with the Assyrians. At least not at first. His comes with his neighbors to the north, the kingdom of Israel. And the Syrians. So to get a sense of what Ahaz is going through, let's go back earlier in chapter 7. And it says this, beginning in verse 1. When Ahaz, son of Jotham, the son of Uzziah, was king of Judah, King Razin of Aram, and Pekath, the son of Ramallah, king of Israel, marched up to fight against Jerusalem, where Ahaz was king. But they could not overpower it. Now, the house of David was told, Aram has allied himself with Ephraim, so the hearts of Ahaz and his people were shaken. They were afraid. They were shaken like the trees of the forest are shaken by the wind. And then the Lord said to Isaiah, go out. You're my prophet. I want you to go out, you and your son, to meet Ahaz at the end of the aqueduct in the upper pool on the road to the Londera's field. And say to him, be careful, Ahaz. Keep calm. Do not be afraid. Do not lose heart because these two smoldering stubs of firewood, because of the fierce anger of Razin and Aram and of the son of, son of Ramallah, those that are coming from northern Israel and Syria. Aram and Ephraim and Ramallah's sons have plotted your ruin, saying, let us invade Judah. Let us tear it apart and divide it among ourselves and make the son of Tabal king over it. Here's Ahaz's situation. Ahaz is a little too friendly to the Assyrians. He wants to make some alliances with the Assyrians... But the northern kingdom and Syria, they feel threatened by Assyria. And Ahaz won't join in with them to help form an alliance in order to fight back. So the king of Israel in the northern kingdom and the king of Syria, they come and attack Jerusalem, the kingdom of Judah. And they surround it. And their intention is to overthrow Ahaz in order to put it in a king that is not as friendly to the Assyrians so they can have power and withstand the Assyrian onslaught. So here's Ahaz's reaction. First of all, he's very angry. They want to replace me with my rival? With my rival, this guy named... Hey, Bill, who do they think they are that can come in and take my place? He also feels embarrassment. 
What will people think of me if I'm brought down by my neighbor? He feels unsettled about his future. What if I can't hold them off? What if they actually succeed? And he feels no peace. War is upon me. There's conflict surrounding my life and my future. What do I do? And so like all of us, when there's conflict around us, when there's anger, when there's embarrassment, when the future's unsettled, for all of us, it's natural. Fear sets in. We become afraid. In verse 7, it goes on, says, yet this is what the sovereign Lord says. It will not take place, Ahaz. What you fear will not take place. It will not happen. For the head of Aram is Damascus, and the head of Damascus only Raisin. And within 65 years, Ephraim will be too shattered to be a people. The head of Ephraim is Samaria. And the head of Samaria is only Ramallah's son. If you do not stand firm in faith, you will not stand at all. Again, the Lord spoke to Ahaz. Ask the Lord your God for a sign, whether in the deepest depths or in the highest heights. But Ahaz said, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I don't want or need a sign. And then Isaiah says, hear now, O house of David. Is it not enough to try the patience of humans? Will you try the patience of my God also? Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son. And we'll call him Emmanuel. He feels angry, he feels embarrassed, he feels unsettled, he feels no peace, there is conflict all around him. He says, what should I do? And fear sets in. And then right out of nowhere, God approaches Ahaz and he says, don't be afraid. It's not going to happen. What you fear the most will not happen. Do you want a sign? And of course, he thinks he has the pious response. Because God intends to give him a sign. He has the right answer to the question. No, 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 I don't want a sign. Don't put your Lord, don't put your God to the test. And then Isaiah comes in, he's like, are you trying God's patience? Are you really not going to trust He's going to give you a sign anyway. And God will give you Emmanuel, which is a sign of his help. But Ahaz, from the beginning, he didn't want a sign. Ahaz goes against the prophet Isaiah, and instead of acting in faith, he retreats into his own fear and he says, only I can take care of this. If I'm going to get out of this bind, it's going to be me. And so what he does, he actually sends a convoy to the king of Assyria with a fairly large sum of money. And he says to the king of Assyria, help me. God has just given him the sign of his help, Emmanuel, God with us. This is a sign that I'm going to be with you, that I'm going to help you. And he says, thanks, but no thanks. And he goes to a different king and offers a large gift and says, I need your help because I know how to fix things. And it works, at least partially. When people go out of their own resources and their own abilities, it 
sometimes works. Sometimes. But most of the time, not completely. It only works to a certain extent. And if you've ever tried it, you know it's true. And so when he goes to the king of Assyria, this changes the world for God's people in the Old Testament. Assyria defeats the Syrians and defeats the northern kingdom. And Ahaz presents himself as a servant. As basically a colony to the king of Assyria. But it didn't quite work out like Ahaz thought. Because see, once you go and pay the king of Assyria one time, you got to go pay him again. And then you got to pay him again. Once he tries to handle things on his own, he has to keep going back again and again and again. And the price goes up and the demands get higher. And eventually, Judah became wary of paying the tribute each year and offering service to the Assyrian king. So the next king, Hezekiah, sought to be freed from the king of Assyria. And he tried to make an alliance with the Egyptians. And he tried to back off from the commitments. He rebelled against the king of Assyria. And then we know from the record in the Old Testament and even historically, the records from Assyria, that in 701, every town and city in Judah was destroyed by the Assyrians. And Hezekiah had to surrender. And now God's people are in exile with no peace. And they sit in exile and they sing together. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lowly Until the Son of God appears, rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, Israel. But we have another story related to this. Emmanuel text. It's not a story of fear, although fear is there. It is actually a story of faith and of peace. We read it earlier in Matthew chapter 1. It says this, beginning in verse 18. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be, his, his Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. Can you imagine what Joseph felt? While Ahaz's story is this big public political event, Joseph has this very private crisis. He's engaged to be married. And before he ever lays with his wife, she's pregnant. Can you imagine the anger? How could she do this to me? Can you imagine the embarrassment? What if they find out? What do people know about this? What will people actually say? He feels unsettled about his future. I don't know if I can do this. And he feels no peace. There's conflict surrounding my life and my future. What do I do? And so fear sets in. 
he just wants to divorce her quietly. But then in verse 20 it says, But after he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit, and she will give birth to a son. And you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. And all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. And when Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded it to him. He took Mary to be home, home to be his wife, but he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to the son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Fear sets into Joseph's life. But unlike Ahaz, he does not give in to fear. But he has faith. And in faith, oddly enough, receives peace. He gets up and he obeys. Instead of quietly divorcing her, he quietly takes her to be his wife. And when the child comes, he names him Jesus. And this not only changes the world for God's people, it changes the world for everyone. And so on the eve of Christmas, God's people join with Joseph and sing. Oh, come, oh, come thou day, spring it, come and cheer. Our spirits by thy advent here disperse the gloomy clouds of night, and death's dark shadow put to flight. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel. Shall come to thee, O Israel. In the book of Isaiah, the opposite of fear is not courage. The opposite of fear is peace. And peace is only received in faith. And faith is not some content that you memorize. It's not some knowledge that you store up in your head. It's not even believing in something so hard just in your brain. But faith is this practical reliance upon the assurance of God when there's real risks and where all your own resources and abilities are just not enough. It means to entrust your security and your future to the God who is with us. And so today, the prophet Isaiah and the angel offer us peace. They offer us today, Emmanuel, God with us. For where Christ is, there will be peace. And so today, the choice is this. It's between two stories. The story of Ahaz. Will you choose the way of fear and depend on your own resources and your own ability to secure your own future? Or is the way of Joseph? Will you choose the way of peace and have faith in Christ, his resources, his ability to secure your future? It's time that we gather at the table. And this is not a table made available by your own resources. It's not a table made available by your own ability. This table is a sign. This table is where we find the source of God who is our help. This is the table where we find peace. This is the table of Advent. And 
at this table, when we gather around it, Emmanuel, God is with us. Come to the table. stand and continue to sing. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel, that mourns in lonely exile here, until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice. to the holy Israel. Oh, come thou day spring, come and cheer our spirits by thine advent here. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night and death's dark shadows put to flight. Rejoice! to thee, O Israel. 
go, I just want to remind you to pick up your Advent candle for you and your family for Christmas. 
We're also, our shepherds will be available for prayer. So just around this corner, our shepherds will be available for prayer for anyone that needs it during this Christmas season. The benediction today is this. For all of us who are feeling anxiety, grief, conflict, stress, or fear, the offer today is peace. Emmanuel, God with us. So receive it this Christmas week in faith as we await his coming and as we trust in his peace. Go in the name of Jesus.
glory reigns, shining.